Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to lecture 5 of the course on multi-valley data mining methods and applications. The title of this lecture is multi-valley analysis. In several data mining problems, we have to deal with the joint behavior of several variables. We have observations on several variables and uh, you want to reduce the dimension of the variables or you want to study the behavior of a set of variables on a set of other variables etc. So, for the statistical analysis of uh, multivariate data, we require different multivariate tools. Now, this is the objective of this lecture. We will uh, uh, consider the multivariate uh, distributions, we will study the conditional and marginal distributions for multivariate data and then uh, I will switch over to multivariate normal distribution. We will study different properties of the multivariate normal distribution which may be required in subsequent lectures. Now, in multivariate analysis, we have to deal with multivariate data. By multivariate data, we mean the data which are consist of sets of measurements on a number of individuals or objects. Then uh, multivariate analysis considers the statistical analysis of multivariate data. So, you have a number of variables and uh, then a number of objects and then you are taking observations on each and every variable of each and, and every individual or object. And your objective is to consider statistical analysis of this kind of multivariate data. Now, in multivariate population, each member of the population will exhibit a set of values, one for each of the variables under consideration. So, you have a set of variables and uh, each member will exhibit a set of values on each and every variable under consideration. And uh, if we draw a sample from multivariate population, then obviously, we get multivariate sample in which each and every sample observation is on a set of variables. Now, suppose we have p random variables uh, which are denoted by capital X1, capital X2, so on capital XP. Then uh, the variables are jointly distributed and we may define the cumulative distribution function of these variables as say capital F x 1, x 2, x p equal to the probability that capital x 1 is less than or equal to small x 1, so on capital x p is less than or equal to small x p. So, this gives you the joint probability distribution or joint C d f of the random variables x 1, x 2, x p. Now, suppose f x 1, x 2, x p is absolutely continuous, then in that case we may define the joint density function of x 1, x 2, x p. And for defining the joint probability density function of x 1, x 2, x p, we partially differentiate the joint C d f capital F x 1, x 2, x p with respect to x 1, x 2 and so on x p. 
and this partial derivative gives you the joint PDF of small x, uh, of x1, x2, xp and we denote it by a small f x1, x2, xp. Therefore, in terms of the joint PDF, we can express the joint CDF. We simply integrate the joint PDF from minus infinity to x1, from minus infinity to x2 and so on, from minus infinity to xp. So, this multiple integral gives you the joint CDF of x1, x2, xp. Now, suppose R is any measurable set in p dimensional Euclidean space. Then for obtaining the probability that x1, x2, xp belong to R, we simply integrate the joint PDF over R. So, this integral gives you the probability that x1, x2, xp belongs to R. Then we may define the joint moments as expectation of x1 to the power h1, x2 to the power h2, so on xp to the power hp. And to obtain this expectation, we multiply this quantity by the joint PDF and then we integrate over x1, x2, xp from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, this gives you the joint moments. Further, the marginal CDF of x1, x2, xr, where r is less than p. So, actually x1, x2, xr is a subset of x1, x2, xp. Just for convenience, we have taken the first r random variables of x1, x2, xp, but uh, you can choose uh, any other set also. So, the marginal CDF of x1, x2, xr is given by the probability that x1 less than or equal to small x1, so on xr less than or equal to small xr, xr plus 1 is less than infinity, so on xp is less than infinity or you can write it as capital F x1, x2, xr infinity, infinity, infinity. So, in the joint CDF capital F x1, x2, xr, xr plus 1, xp, we simply take the limit x r plus 1 tending to infinity, x r plus 2 tending to infinity, so on x p tending to infinity. All in terms of uh, joint PDF, we can write the marginal CDF of x1, x2, xr in this form. Say so, we integrate the joint PDF over x r plus 1, so on x p from minus infinity to plus infinity and uh, over x 1, x 2, x r from minus infinity to x 1, so on minus infinity to x r. Then the set of random variables x 1, x 2, x p are said to be mutually independent. If we can write the joint CDF of x1, x2, xp in the form of product of their marginal CDFs. So, capital F x1, x2, xp is equal to f1, x1, f2, x2, so on fp, xp. Here, f i x i is the marginal CDF of x i for all i equal to 1 to p. So, if this condition is satisfied, then we say that x 1, x 2, x p are mutually independent random variables. Uh, similarly, suppose you have two sets, 
the first set is consist of uh, the first all elements of x say x 1, x 2, x r and second set is consist of x r plus 1, x r plus 2, so on x p. Then these two sets are said to be independent. If we can write the joint C D F of x 1, x 2, x p in the form of product of marginal C D F of x 1, x 2, x r and the marginal C D F of x r plus 1, so on x p. So, this is the marginal C D F of x 1, x 2, x r this is the marginal C D F of x r plus 1, so on x p and uh, this is the joint C D F of two sets. Now, if x 1, x 2, x p are mutually independent, then one can easily verify that expectation of x 1 to the power h 1, x 2 to the power h 2, so on x p to the power h p can be written as a product of expectation of x i to the power h i for product is over i equal to 1 to p. So, this is actually equal to expectation of x 1 to the power h 1 into expectation of x 2 to the power h 2, so on expectation of x p to the power h p. Now, we can define the conditional density of x 1, x 2, x r given x r plus 1, so on x p. The conditional density function is given by, by the ratio of joint density function of x 1, x 2, x p divided by the marginal density function of x r plus 1, so on x p. So, what we do in the numerator, we take the joint density function of x 1, x 2, x p. In the denominator, we integrate the joint density function over x 1, x 2, x r. This gives you the conditional density function of x 1, x 2, x r given x r plus 1, so on x p. Now, to simplify the things, suppose uh, we write x 1 as x 1, x 2, x r transpose. So, this x 1 denotes the vector of first r components of x. Then x 2 is the vector of last p minus r components of x. Obviously, the order of x 1 is r cross 1 and the order of x 2 is p minus r cross 1. Then you can write x equal to x 1 x 2 or we can write x in this form. Then the conditional density function of x 2 given x 1 is the joint density function of x 1 x 2 divided by the marginal density function of x 1. So, here f x 1 x 2 denotes the joint p d f of x 1 x 2 and f 1 x 1 denotes the marginal p d f of x 1 and f x 2 given x 1 denotes the conditional p d f of x 2 given x 1. Now, we consider the transformation say y a equal to y a x 1 x 2 x p. So, basically our objective is uh, we have the joint probability density function or the joint C D F of x 1, x 2, x p and uh, we want to obtain the joint C D F of y 1, y 2, y p, where y 1, y 2, y p are defined by using this kind of transformation. 
Now, suppose the transformation from x space to y space is 1 to 1. This transformation is 1 to 1 transformation. Then you can define the inverse transformation also and the inverse transformation is say x i equal to x i y 1 y 2 y p for all i equal to 1 to p. Then the random variables y 1 y 2 y p are defined as say capital y i equal to y i x 1 x 2 x p for all i equal to 1 to p. And uh, you are interested in obtaining the joint density function of y 1, y 2, y p. Then for obtaining the joint density function of y 1, y 2, y p, what we do? We simply write the joint probability density function of x 1, x 2, x p. But while writing this joint probability density function, we express each of these x i say x 1, x 2 and x p in terms of y 1, y 2, y p means instead of directly writing x 1, we write x i y x 1, y 1, y 2, y p. Instead of writing x 2, we write x 2, y 1, y 2, y p. So, we express each of x i in terms of y i. So, that this f is a function of y 1, y 2, y p. And then we multiply it by the Jacobian of the transformation. We denote it by j y 1, y 2, y p. So, this j y 1, y 2, y p is the Jacobian of the transformation and the Jacobian of the transformation is given by j y 1, y 2, y p equal to mod of determinant of del x 1 over del y 1, del x 1 over del y 2, so on del x 1 over del y p and so on del x p over del y 1, del x p over del y 2, so on del x p over del y p. So, this is how we define the Jacobian of the transformation. So, again it is uh, simple if the transformation from x to y is y 1 to 1 transformation then we simply write the joint PDF of x 1, x 2, x p here, but we express each of these x i's in terms of y i's. Multiply it by the Jacobian of the transformation and then we get the joint PDF of y 1, y 2, y p. Now, we consider multivariate moments of a random vector. So, suppose x equal to x 1, x 2, x p transpose, this is a p cross 1 random vector. Then we define the mean vector of x as expectation of x equal to mu. Actually, suppose expectation of x i is equal to mu i for all i equal to 1 to then you have to take expectation of x. Now, expectation of x means x is equal to x 1, so on x p and expectation of this random vector means you take expectation of each and every element of the random vector. So, we take expectation of x 1 which is mu 1 again you have expectation of x 2 which is mu 2 and so on, expectation of x p is mu p. And we denote this vector by mu. This mu is called the mean vector of x. Again suppose sigma i i is equal to expectation of x i minus mu i square. So, this gives you the variance of x i and sigma i j is the covariance between x i and x j. So, we define sigma i j equal to expectation of x i minus mu i into x j minus mu j. So, sigma i i is the variance of x i, sigma i j is the covariance between x i and x j 
then you can easily define the correlation coefficient between x i and x j as we denote it by rho i j, rho i j is equal to covariance between x i x j divided by the square root of variance of x i into variance of x j. And covariance between x i and x j is sigma i j, variance of x i is sigma i i, variance of x j is sigma j j. So, this is how we define the correlation coefficient between x i and x j. And then we can define the variance covariance matrix of x. So, we simply take x minus mu, x minus mu transpose. Now, x minus mu is equal to x 1 minus mu 1. So, on x p minus mu p and then we take transpose of this. So, we take x 1 minus mu 1 x p minus mu p here. We take product of these two. Then product is x 1 minus mu 1 square x 1 minus mu 1 x 2 minus mu 2 and so on. And then we take expectation. So, expectation of this matrix means expectation of each and every element of this matrix. Now, expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 square is equal to sigma 1 1. Expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 x 2 minus mu 2 is equal to sigma 1 2 and so on. So, this is how we get this p cross p matrix and this matrix is called the variance covariance matrix of x. The reason is that the diagonal elements of this matrix say sigma 1 1, sigma 2 2, so on sigma p p, these are the variances. Say sigma 1 1 is the variance of x 1, sigma 2 2 is the variance of x 2 and so on, sigma p p is the variance of x p. And the off diagonal elements give you the covariances between different components of x. Say sigma 1 2 gives you the covariance between x 1 and x 2 or sigma 2 p gives you the covariance between x 2 and x p. Uh, notice that the covariance between x 1 and x 2 is equal to the covariance between x 2 and x 1 or covariance between x 1 and x p is equal to the covariance between x p and x 1. In general, you can say that the covariance between x i and x j is the same as the covariance between x j and x i. That is why this matrix is a symmetric matrix. i j th element of this matrix is equal to the j i th element of this matrix. And we denote this variance covariance matrix by capital sigma. Capital sigma is a positive definite symmetric matrix. Similarly, we may define the correlation matrix of X. Say the correlation matrix of X denoted by capital rho has the i j th element equal to rho i j. Obviously, the diagonal elements are equal to 1, because corresponding to diagonal elements you get correlation coefficient equal to 1. Now, we consider the multivariate normal distribution. Now, before coming to the multivariate normal distribution, let us write the probability density function of univariate normal distribution. So, suppose x is a random variable which follows a univariate normal distribution having mean mu and variance sigma square, then you can write 
the probability density function of x in the form f x equal to 1 upon under root 2 pi sigma exponential minus x minus mu square upon twice sigma square. Further, you can write it as 1 upon 2 pi to the power half and then since the variance is sigma square. So, we simply write it equal to sigma square to the power half exponential minus half x minus mu sigma minus 2 x minus mu. Then suppose this capital X is equal to x 1 x 2 x p transpose is a p cross 1 random vector. Now, we say that x follows a p variate normal distribution this random vector x. If its p d f is of the form f x given nu capital sigma equal to 1 upon 2 pi to the power p by 2. Now, in the univariate normal distribution you have single variable. So, you write 2 pi to the power half here we have p variables. So, we take 2 pi to the power p by 2 and determinant of sigma to the power half. Sigma is the variance covariance matrix. Here, sigma square is the variance of x. Exponential minus half x minus mu transpose sigma inverse x minus mu. x belongs to the p dimensional Euclidean space R p. So, if the p d f is of this form, then we say that x follows a p variate normal distribution. Now, notice that this quantity is always greater than or equal to 0, because sigma is a positive definite matrix. So, sigma inverse is also a positive definite matrix. So, this quadratic form is always greater than or equal to 0. And in fact, it is always greater than 0 unless x is equal to mu. And uh, well, I am not going to prove this result here. And uh, if you integrate this density function over the p dimensional Euclidean space means uh, you integrate it from x 1 equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x 2 from minus infinity to plus infinity so on x p minus infinity to plus infinity. Then you obtain 1. So, we can easily verify that f x given mu sigma is greater than or equal to 0 and it is integral from minus infinity to infinity is equal to 1. So, this function satisfies the conditions for the probability density function for the joint probability density function. Here, expectation of x is equal to mu and expectation of x minus mu, x minus mu transpose is equal to sigma. So, actually mu is the mean vector and capital sigma is the variance covariance matrix of x and we denote it by x follows n p means p variate normal distribution with mean vector mu and variance covariance matrix capital sigma. Again sigma i i is the variance of x i and sigma i j is the covariance between x i and x j. Sigma i i is the i th diagonal element of capital sigma and sigma i j is the i j th element of capital sigma. 
and then you can define the correlation coefficient between x i and x j as rho i j equal to sigma i j upon under root sigma i i into sigma j j. And uh, this variance covariance matrix is positive definite symmetric matrix. Now, suppose we take sigma i j equal to sigma i square for all i equal to j and 0 for all i not equal to j. Then capital sigma is equal to in the diagonal you have sigma i square all the off diagonal elements are equal to 0. So, ultimately you can write the variance covariance matrix in the form sigma i square i p. Now, in this case you can write the PDF of multivariate normal distribution in the form f x given mu sigma square equal to you have 1 upon 2 pi to the power p by 2 then determinant of sigma is equal to determinant of sigma square i p and then you take this sigma square outside. So, you get sigma square to the power p determinant value of i p determinant value of i p is equal to 1. So, you get sigma square to the power p and then if you take determinant sigma to the power half then ultimately you obtain p by 2 here. So, you get sigma square to the power p by 2. So, in the denominator you obtain 2 pi to the power p by 2 and then sigma to the power p exponential minus 1 upon 2 sigma square x minus mu transpose x minus mu because sigma inverse is now equal to sigma minus 2 i p. So, x minus mu transpose in here you have sigma inverse. So, you write sigma inverse equal to small sigma minus 2 i p x minus mu. So, this is equal to 1 upon sigma square x minus mu transpose x minus mu. And then uh, this is equal to summation i equal to 1 to p or you can take j here summation j equal to 1 to p x j minus mu j square and ultimately you can write it in the form of this product product j equal to 1 to p 1 upon 2 pi to the power half sigma exponential minus half x j minus mu j square. So, you get this expression. So, you can write the joint PDF of x in this form, in the form of this product. And from here you observe that x1, x2, xp are independently distributed. Now, suppose z follows p variate normal distribution having mean vector 0 and variance covariance matrix i p. Then you can write the probability density function of z as say we denote it by phi z equal to 1 upon 2 pi to the power p by 2. Notice that the variance covariance matrix is i p. So, it is determinant value is 1. So, you get 1 here. Then exponential minus 1 upon 2 mu is equal to 0. So, you get z minus mu is 0 transpose then you have sigma inverse sigma inverse is i p z. So, you get z transpose z here. So, exponential minus half z transpose z. This phi z is the probability density function of p variate standard normal distribution. Remember that for the univariate case z if z has normal distribution 
having mean 0 and variance 1, then we say that z has a standard normal distribution or the standard univariate normal distribution. Here the PDF of z is of this form, it has mean vector 0 and variance coherence matrix I, identity matrix, the p variate is standard normal distribution. Now, suppose x follows a p variate normal distribution having mean vector mu and variance coherence matrix sigma and we define y equal to alpha plus a x, where a is any m cross p matrix of rank m, m is less than or equal to p and uh, obviously, alpha is of order m cross 1. Further, y is also of order m cross 1. Then, the distribution of y is n variate normal distribution having mean vector nu, where nu is equal to alpha plus a mu and the variance coherence matrix a sigma a transpose. Well, I am not going to give you the details of proof of this result, but basically what we have done, we have a linear transformation of the form alpha plus a x, where the matrix A is defined like this, it has, it is of order m cross p and it has rank m which is less than or equal to p you can easily obtain the expectation of y. What is expectation of y? It is equal to alpha is constant. So, alpha plus a times expectation of x which is mu. So, you get alpha plus a mu. Similarly, you can obtain the variance coherence matrix of y also. Now, suppose p is an orthogonal matrix such that p sigma p transpose is identity matrix. So, p sigma p transpose is I p or sigma is equal to p transpose p and then we define z equal to p x minus mu. Then the distribution of z is p variate normal with mean vector 0 and variance coherence matrix I p. You can uh, easily prove this result by making use of the result 5.1. Z is equal to p x minus p mu. So, you take alpha equal to minus p mu and uh, a equal to p here and then you apply this result. You observe that nu is equal to alpha plus a mu and alpha is minus p mu, a is p. So, this is equal to 0. Similarly, you can obtain omega also omega is a, a is equal to p sigma p transpose and p sigma t p transpose is i p and uh, then the p d f of z is of the form phi z equal to 1 upon 2 pi to the power p y 2 e to the power minus half z transpose z. Now, suppose we partition x in this form. So, we take first q components and then p minus q components. So, x 1 is q cross 1 vector and x 2 is p minus q cross 1 vector. Then expectation of x is equal to mu and again we partition mu also in first q and last p minus q components. Expectation of x minus mu, x minus mu transpose. Again, we write x minus mu as 
x 1 minus mu 1 x 2 minus mu 2 and transpose of this is x 1 minus mu 1 transpose x 2 minus mu 2 transpose. So, this is equal to x 1 minus mu 1 and then you have x 1 minus mu 1 transpose and if you take expectation of this which is sigma. So, you have expectation of this which is sigma 1 1. Similarly, here you obtain expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 x 2 minus mu 2 transpose and this is say sigma 1 2 and then here you obtain sigma 2 1 sigma 2 2. So, basically what you have done you have partitioned this variance, variance matrix sigma also into q p minus q rows and q p minus q columns. So, expectation of x i minus mu i x i minus mu i transpose is equal to sigma i i equal to 1 to 1 to expectation of x 1 minus mu 1 x 2 minus mu 2 transpose is sigma 1 2 which is equal to sigma 2 1 transpose. Then x 1 and x 2 are independently distributed if and only if sigma 1 2 is equal to 0. Again uh, the proof of this result is not given here, but you can find uh, the proof in any standard multivariate book. Now, here what is sigma 1 2? Different components or different elements of sigma 1 2 give you the covariances between the elements of x 1 and elements of x 2 and sigma 1 2 is equal to 0 means all these covariances are equal to 0. So, this shows that x 1 and x 2 are independently distributed if and only if the covariance between any element of x 1 and any element of x 2 is 0. All the elements of x 1 and elements of x 2 are uncorrelated with each other. Now, if we derive the marginal distribution of x 2, the marginal distribution of x 2 is again multivariate normal distribution with p minus q components. It has mean vector mu 2 and variance coherence matrix sigma 2 2. And then you can obtain the conditional distribution of x 1 given x 2 also. For obtaining the conditional distribution of x 1 x 2, you simply take the joint distribution joint probability density function of x 1 x 2 divided by the marginal probability density function of x 1 x 2. Now, this is also multivariate normal having mean vector expectation of x 1 given x 2 equal to mu 1 plus sigma 1 2 sigma 2 2 inverse x 2 minus mu 2 and we denote it by say nu 1 and expectation of x 1 minus nu 1 x 1 minus nu 1 transpose given x 2 is equal to sigma 1 1 minus sigma 1 2 sigma 2 2 inverse sigma 2 1. Actually, this equation is also called the recreation equation of x 1 given x 2 or x 1 on x 2 and uh, sigma 1 to sigma 2 to inverse gives you the matrix of regression coefficients. Notice that is if sigma 1 to is equal to 0 sigma 1 to equal to 0 means the components of x 1 and components of x 2 are uncorrelated with each other. Means, x, the components of x 2 do not have any information about x 1. 
in that case this matrix of the gradient coefficients becomes 0 and expectation of x 1 given x 2 is equal to mu 1. So, whether you take the unconditional expectation of x 1 or you take the conditional expectation, it remains unchanged, it is equal to mu 1. Further, for sigma 1 to equal to 0, the conditional variance coefficient matrix of x 1 is equal to sigma 1 1, which is the same as the unconditional variance coefficient matrix of x 1. Now, suppose uh, z is a random vector of order p cross 1 and it follows the p variate normal distribution having mean vector 0 and variance coefficient matrix i p and m is any idempotent matrix. So, that m square is equal to m and m has rank q and q is less than or equal to p and then we take this quadratic form z transpose m z and z transpose m z follows a chi square distribution with q degrees of freedoms. Uh, to prove this result, uh, notice that m is an idempotent matrix and it has rank q. So, there exists an orthogonal matrix p such that p transpose m p is equal to lambda. Lambda is a diagonal matrix and the diagonal elements of lambda are the eigenvalues of m. And what are the eigenvalues of m? Eigenvalues of m are either 1 or 0. Since rank of m is q, so q diagonal elements are equal to 1 and remaining p minus q diagonal elements are equal to 0. Now, we can write z transpose m z equal to say we write z transpose p, p transpose m p, p transpose z because p, p transpose is equal to identity matrix. And then p transpose m p is equal to lambda and then we write v equal to p transpose z. So, z transpose p is equal to v transpose here you get v and here you get lambda. So, ultimately you obtain v transpose lambda v. Now, notice that lambda is of this form. First q diagonal elements are 1 and the remaining are 0. So, v transpose lambda v is equal to summation j equal to 1 to q v j square. Now, what is the distribution of v? v is equal to p transpose z. z follows no, p variate normal distribution having mean vector 0 and variance coefficient matrix i p. So, v also follows a p variate normal distribution having mean vector 0 and what is the variance coefficient matrix? p transpose the variance coefficient matrix of z p. The variance coefficient matrix of z is identity. So, you get p transpose p which is equal to identity matrix. So, the distribution of v is n p 0 i p. So, in this expression v 1, v 2, v q are identically independently distributed and each of these v j's follows a normal distribution having mean 0 and variance 1. So, these are i i d standard normal values. So, z transpose m z is equal to summation j equal to 1 to q v j square, where v j each of these v j s follows 
normal 0 1 and these VGs are independently distributed also. So, ultimately this follows a chi square distribution with q degrees of freedoms. Now, we consider some results of matrix differentiation. So, suppose that is a k cross 1 vector with elements z 1, z 2, z k and uh, we write capital del z equal to del o del z which is equal to del o del z 1, so on del o del z k transpose. Then suppose you want to differentiate a transpose z with respect to z, then a transpose z is equal to a 1 z 1 plus a k z k. Now, suppose we differentiate it partially with respect to z 1, then what we obtain? A 1. In general, if we differentiate it with respect to z i, we get A i for all i equal to 1 to k. And then we set all these in vector form and then we obtain del o del z a transpose z equal to a. Similarly, one can prove this result also del o del z a z equal to a transpose where this capital A is a matrix. Now, if capital A is a symmetric matrix and you have this quadratic form z transpose a z, then del o del z z transpose a z is equal to twice a z. Well, uh, again I am not going into the details of the proof, but uh, you can easily ver verify this result. Just write this quadratic form in summation form, then differentiate it with respect to say z 1, differentiate it with respect to z 2 and so on. So, ultimately you get this result. Similarly, if you differentiate z transpose a z twice with respect to z transpose first and then with, with respect to z, then you obtain twice a. Now, we consider some expectations. So, suppose x follows p variate normal distribution and p mu sigma and a and b are p cross 1 vectors and capital A is equal to this matrix with i j th element a i j. Actually, capital A is p cross p matrix. Then you can easily obtain expectation of a transpose x and expectation of x transpose a x. So, for obtaining expectation of a transpose x, it is very simple. You simply take expectation of a transpose x and a is a vector of constants. So, you can take expectation inside and uh, can write it as a transpose expectation of x. Expectation of x is equal to mu. So, ultimately you obtain a transpose mu. To obtain this second expectation, we write x transpose a x in the form say x minus mu plus mu transpose a x minus mu plus mu. Further, you can also write x transpose a x as this is a quadratic form of order 1 cross 1. This x transpose is of order 1 cross p, a is of order p cross p and then this x is of order p cross 1. So, this is a scalar and uh, then trace of this scalar is the same scalar and then you can write this trace as a x 
x transpose. So, we have written x transpose a x equal to trace of a x x transpose and then we make use of this expression. So, we write it as trace of a x minus mu plus mu x minus mu plus mu transpose and then we obtain trace of a we take these two expressions together. So, you obtain x minus mu x minus mu transpose plus mu transpose a mu. Actually, here you obtain trace of a mu mu transpose which is equal to mu transpose a mu plus you have trace of a x minus mu mu transpose which is equal to mu transpose a x minus mu and similarly you get an expression of the form trace of mu x minus mu transpose and then you have a also here which is equal to x minus mu transpose a mu. Now, if you take expectation of this term, then expectation of x minus mu is equal to 0. Similarly, here if you take expectation of this term, then expectation of this term is equal to 0. So, the expectation of this term is equal to 0. Now, we take expectation expectation of x transpose a x. So, the expectation of first term is trace of a expectation of x minus mu x minus mu transpose. Then you take expectation of second term is a constant. So, it is expectation is equal to mu transpose a mu and then you have this term the third term or the terms like this one or this one. And when you take expectation of this term, expectation of x minus mu is 0. Again expectation of x minus mu, x minus mu transpose is equal to sigma. So, what you get? Trace of a sigma plus mu transpose a mu. So, expectation of x transpose a x is equal to trace of a sigma plus mu transpose a mu. Further, you can easily obtain the covariance between a transpose x and b transpose x. So, covariance between a transpose x and b transpose x is equal to expectation of a transpose x minus we take expectation of a transpose x equal to a transpose mu here into b transpose x minus expectation of b transpose x is b transpose mu. And then we write it in the form a transpose x minus mu and uh, we write this term as x minus mu transpose b. And then we take expectation. So, we get sigma here. So, the final expression is a transpose sigma b. So, the covariance between a transpose x and a b transpose x is a transpose sigma b. So, in this lecture, we have uh, discussed uh, some of the results of multivariate normal distribution. Of course, I have not given uh, the proofs of most of the results. Uh, we will require all these results in uh, our subsequent lectures. So, I am going to stop here. Thank you.